Hue mask and luminosity mask. What are they? Uh, Hue mask is basically one of the new addition in new DxO Photo Lab 8 and the luminosity mask, which weirdly uh, not available directly in uh, DxO Photo Lab 8 or any of the DxO lines. Instead, they decided to push it to uh, DxO Film Pack which has nothing to do with the masking which i understand from the business point of view probably because they wanted to uh, you know push the sale of dxo film pack um i mean it is incredible incredible piece of software but uh, unfortunately there's not much of a demand for it i guess so they had to find a different way to push the sale i assure you that dxo film pack without any kind of a special uh, slider or masking it's itself on its own is a fantastic piece of software to have some beautiful vintage uh, film look with the real film they re work really hard on it when they actually originally developed it uh, i don't think it necessary it's necessary to you know um, um, do something more than what they already did i understand that you know if they want to sell the same software uh, to the same person over and over again then you need to give something more for their value right so i guess there uh, there is the peak of this software and then they decided to add something has nothing to do with um this this particular software um so yeah so that's what my take on this uh, the, their uh, decision to add luminosity max on dxo for f7 which i do have actually so i if i go to effects and actually have all the things that are available normally in dxo uh, film pack and also if i go to the color tab then i do have um you know the film pack uh, time machine and all the film stock uh, even in the preset um so which is fantastic but then again that's that's that uh dxo uh, no uh, what i'm saying say the hue mask which is uh generally if i if you click right somewhere there you go found it and then if i drop it you see that it what it did is actually, if you look at the right hand side, and I'm gonna pull it up for you, you see that little thing on the side. So basically, pick the color from uh, so same color of this image. So let's say instead of that, if I drop this, uh, use this dropper on green, the background, you see that it it picked up all the let's check it out it picked the, all the yellowish green in the background instead of the instead of the lion um those who are into the videography um especially the d uh, da vinci resolve it's one of the oldest type of um software the, the piece of tool available in this particular color grading software um, which is not anymore just a color grading it's a fantastic tool for audio video color grading everything in general um, you know i highly recommend you to download that video editing software it's actually available for free which is incredible and uh, which has nothing to do with this video but what i'm trying to say is that the uh, this is a very common uh, fantastic piece of software that available in this video editing software now i think the Capture One Pro has the same type of tool. Now it's available in the DxO. Um, what I'm trying to understand that the DxO is trying to uh, be more into the color side instead of a perfect image with the perfect sharpening and the noise free and all that, which is already their state of the art. Uh, I have no doubt about it, but you know, they're trying to, you know, putting their trying to put their feet into the other territory and eventually probably the photo management so that they can you know kind of get closer to lightroom uh, it's gonna be very difficult to go to the close to photoshop but lightroom <coughs> is doable in my opinion anyway how to use this hue tool hue you know hue hue in a simple language color now you pick a color of this image whatever color then you find hue on it when I say fine tune, either you can be extremely precise. Problem is that uh, it's tiny. So if I could make it, no, I'm doing opposite. I cannot, I mean, I wish that slider, it was a bit longer or I could open it separately. 
Can I do that? I can't, I think. So I wish that window, I could open it separately and then, you know, enlarge it. But at this point, I don't think I can. Now, the top part, that's... Uh, you slowly, slowly move into the other territory, for example, closer to green, then uh, aqua blue to blue, or left hand side, you can do the same thing, you can go into the broader hue. Now, bottom slider, which is basically it gives you a nice little uh, fade out, so instead of um, very concrete, and you know, you see that. It looks, it doesn't look very smooth. It looks pretty, you know, hard cut, which is not nice if you're trying to change uh, color. So you, you want to have a little bit of, um, you know, fading out to make it look nice and normal and has a nice gradation. Obviously, you can change it to black and white uh, to have a bit more precision. Uh, color overlay, I, I use both, it depends on the situation. Um, and then after that, it's easy. Basically, you can actually um, uh, change everything that necessary. It doesn't matter. Uh, exposure, highlight, mid-tone, shadow, black, white, contrast, uh, clear view, uh, temperature, tint, um, uh, even the HSL. All that things are available. You know, available in this. Uh, that 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 the um, local adjustment. So at least hue essentially to be precise in in the end is that either you use the dropper or you use these little color channels and then you you, you just modify that uh, that's how it does is basically share a little bit with the uh, the hsl for instance uh, how do i where do i go so if you want to let's say i delete this thing and then i go back to the color channel and then i click the color dropper and then select uh, drop on uh, that particular color you know it kind of does the same thing let's say uh, you I, 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 I you know make it take off the saturation or add more saturation brightness luminance etc same with the, this thing you have actually more bit bit more control I guess you can change the hue to different color if you want to which is which is kind of strange and awesome at the same time and the as just like the hue uh, um, mask you can go a little bit on the left or a little bit on the right or it can be a bit more precise as you want same for the bottom that actually uh, top become bottom bottom become top which means that uh, the bottom one you're actually selecting the hue itself and the top one you are you giving a little bit of faded fading look to make sure that it has a nice and a beautiful uh, gradation so the top one this one it's the bottom where is it where is my local adjustment is the bottom one at the hue let's double check where is it uh, pip so if I there you go finally so bottom one here is the top one in the hue section you know what I mean uh, HSL section sorry and the top one obviously is the bottom one so if you know what is HSL, all you have to do to understand better is to invert it. So HSL, remember, is a hue, saturation, and luminance. So in this case, you just select a hue, and then you just do the exact same thing overall. It's just another way to do, um, you know, the masking and all that. Uh, pretty easy peasy lemon squeezy. Now luminance, luminance, luminosity max, luminance. Ooh. Instead of color, you pick light. So, for instance, uh, this is the darkest part, I believe, of the lion. No, oh, I'm sorry, probably the nose, uh, this part. So, darkest part of the lion. On the brightest part of the lion, it would be the feather. Obviously, the background as well, when you dr put the dropper on it, it will pick everything in the image. Let's take a look. For instance, I'm going to take on this particular part of the of the mouth and the nose. What does it do? 
so it's practically picked up almost everything now um hang on a second what did i do i apologize i actually use it's still the humax i'm going to delete the humax stupid me and go to the luminosity max and now we are back in the game right so you see that it selected pretty much all the similar area of the luminosity now exact same thing top one you select the luminance part uh, a bit more precise bit more concrete and make sure that it's not getting into the different luminosity territory or like you want to go a nice bit you know by smoothness on the darkest part but not too much or you want to be super duper precise that's up to you for instance in this case either you know uh, you can keep that or i would make sure that it select all the part of the nose and the mouth and i would use a brush to make sure that rest are gone that's 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 another way to uh to uh be, be your um luminosity max anyway here's the problem problem is that again it it, it it's not doesn't do any local adjustment i don't think uh, luminosity max has a place in the local adjustment area in my opinion luminosity max should be in yeah i get it. it it is a locally selecting luminosity max but that should be somewhere in the um, you know global adjustment like a light adjustment or hue max should be in the color let me explain you why um because when you go to the uh, luminosity any mask doesn't matter, especially the hue and luminosity it's selecting everything from the image so ideally ideally you want to i'm going to delete that you want to have like a, any of the existing uh, like let's say the control control point i delete that on it i mean that makes more sense because that much better in my opinion that you are you can pinpoint everything say i'm going to do black and white and then you already have a fantastic chroma and luma channels like say i'm going to be a bit more precise on my chroma so i know that is taking the majority of the nose and the mouth and then in the luma channel either i could go a bit more other territory brighter area or i can be a bit more concrete and depends on your situation you can even make it, make it smaller to make sure that it's only and only using that area you see that's practically control panel with the mix of uh where, where are they where are my other things um hue and the luminosity mask it's a combo of both so now let's say you don't i mean this is a round but you don't want round you want a brush so my second choice would be uh, using um the brush let's say you use the brush here for now and then that'd be awesome that within let's say i'm going to go to color overlay within this thing you would be able to you know uh, select the hue and uh, luminosity of the mask area which as a matter of fact available in silky Beast double studio pro uh already i don't know anywhere of other other other, other uh, area but if imagine that i could mask it and then within it i could do exact same thing that i just did before uh, the luminosity max the like luma or chroma of 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 uh, the control um control point or control line they both more or less the same and um, yeah that i don't have it let me double check before i criticize too much the auto mask so if i do auto mask here uh, ba, ba, ba. let's say i do auto mask what it would do exactly would it be a bit more precise i don't know let's see the mask option auto mask opacity let's 
more, but I don't know. And then would it be more, less? Yeah, I mean, automatic part does a little bit of that. You know, it's trying to select the 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 majority of the my mask area and uh, trying to do it automatically, which is not very ideal, is it? Because, you know, if I had this dropper of, of uh, HSL in the local adjustment after using the mask, like here, then I could select the color of this particular brushed area. That would be awesome. Same goes for the luminosity max. Imagine that essentially what I'm trying to say is that you brush the whole thing, you brush the whole thing, and in this thing, I, I can select black, white, red, whatever hue, and my luminosity mask. Which, that brings to the last part. I'm sorry for the lion. I'm going to get rid of it. Um, what I think, in my personal opinion, I think DxO going to do that, but is probably going to be in uh, DxO Photo Lab nine or ten. In my humble opinion, that is exactly there they're going to be, which I understand again, because as an already amazing software, it is, you know, it's not good for business if you make something awesome already, and then that's about it. You know, uh, they have to pay their salary and then, you know, it's a big, big, big investment in a company. Uh, that's why Adobe is thriving because no matter people are complaining about their subscription, but boy, don't, doesn't it work? So DxO imagine that one day they decided to go to subscription. Uh, they know that people are going to hate it. So they have to have at least both options like capture one like you did buy the whole software at one and then you have to spend money on update after update after update or you pay subscription which capture one is doing it already uh so my point is that i think that they know that they could do that but they're not going to do that because if they give all the good stuff already why would you spend money next year or ever well, that's my take, and I hope that you understood how much uh, the luminosity max and hue must work. And my a little bit of a rant, you know, I'm not going to hide. It is a little bit of a rant, isn't it? Anyway, take care of yourself, and bye-bye.